Hello. Uh, today I'm going to be doing another Lima makeover. This time it's going to be the um, 42 foot luggage parcels van. Unlike so many other Lima models, the body is really good. It's the wheels and the bogies that let it down. Uh, they decided to put the BR1 underneath this uh, vehicle which is wrong because it should be a LMS riveted nine foot bogey. This one cost me, what is it, seven quid at the local model shop, probably second, third or fourth hand. Um, and it'd probably still be only worth about seven quid when I'm finished with it. But hopefully it will look a little less plastically and a little more like uh, a decent model. As ever, we'll start by stripping it down by taking the roof off and then the body, the bogies and the battery box and lighting equipment assembly. Unlike normal, I'm going to start with the roof because that's the easy bit to get out of the way first. There's not much to be done on the roof. It's just uh, getting rid of that injection pin molding and a general clean up. I opted not to replace the ventilators on the roof which I'm not sure was a good idea or not. And I also decided not to take the paint off as well. So it was straight in the paint booth with uh, the dark roof grey colour and the top tip on these ones is because the whole roof assembly is clear plastic if you paint the underside if there's any scratches or dinks in the top it won't show through. Now to stop the roof looking a bit plain and boring by being just one colour, I decided to go with Tiger Stripes, which is a lighter shade of grey. And then once that had dried, and then mixed that lighter shade with the original shade and just went over it lightly, just to blend it all together. This vehicle will add to my already growing collection of weird and wonderful parcel stock and I blame Brian because he was sort of instrumental in introducing me to such weird and wonderful things. My go-to book is the RCTS coaching stock book of 1976 which is smack in the middle of my sort of area era and essentially it's a spotting book but it gives a list of all of the things that you'd expect to be running at that time. And like my quest with the 21 ton mineral wagons to have pretty much one of every sort in a rake of wagons, this is a new, well it's an old one really, but it's, it's a new to this channel sort of quest to get one of every different type of parcel van that was running in 1976 on my model railway. Some of them are ready to run, some of them are kits, some of them are not easy to come by. My most prized one, there is a kit of it but it, it commands such a high price and that is the LNER the one that we're dealing with today, the LMS 42 foot Gov or luggage passenger ve ve vehicle was introduced by the LMS in the mid 30s, built in three batches, nearly about 200 were built. All of this information again is in the description. Of the 200 or so vehicles that were constructed, only 39 were in service in 1971. By 1976, my book era, there were only 10 left in service and the following year there were only three and I suspect the year after that there were none. A few of which saw further use as departmental vehicles of which Lima did um, a model as an electrification vehicle, I do believe, numbered in the 975XXX range. 
back to the model and we've just put in the detail parts on which are the handrails I should really have put new door handles on but I couldn't quite quite find any that I really liked as replacements I painted the inside of the the uh, body white not that you can see it once the roof is on but I did um, and just as note I clipped off the ends of the uh, handrails inside and then you have to file them flush as well because otherwise it stops the windows going into the correct position when you put the roof on. The bogies I bought from Dark Castings and are manufactured by MJT. Again I'll leave a, uh, a link in the description for where I bought these from. Now const construction of these is fairly straightforward uh, it just need to bend them up, solder the joints and glue the side frames on. I opted to have the NEM362 pocket adapter as well for the, for the couplings. And this really was a, a massive help because it, there was no fiddling about with it. It, it was just about getting the, the length over the buffers right because it, it was at the correct height when I put the 14mm wheels in of which I bought from Hornby. After I put the brass bearing cups in I then offered up the bogey side frames and they just need drilling out just slightly and then filing the burr off as well. Once they were glued on it was into the paint shop where I give them a lick of um, Halfords Grey Primer and then it was my not black that I painted them in then next. There are other ways of doing this as well. One method which I've recently discovered will be a topic of another upcoming video. Some of the lugs on the underframe needed pinging off to get the uh, base plate low enough to accept the wheels. Now even doing that I had to get it even lower to get it the buffers to be at a reasonable height and then after that I had to chop a little bit out of the floor so that the wheels didn't foul, uh, just keep rubbing on the under, uh, underside of the floor. I've been having a few technical issues shall we say just recently uh, being my laptop computer and my primary airbrush decided to give up the ghost as well which meant I had to revert to a older cheaper version and for the weathering this was not a good idea. After I'd done a quick uh, after I'd done the initial uh, panel lining with a dark wash I then went to the spray booth and give it just a small dusting of brake dust uh, but my cheaper older airbrush decided to start spitting and it spat huge chunks of paint all over the place and it looked more like a polka dot bikini more like a parcel van anyway I had to sort of de-weather it which didn't turn out too bad and then compensate by using weathering powders onto the turntable and I'm quite pleased with this one again so it doesn't look too shabby at all now at the beginning I said I'm gearing up for something that's potentially quite difficult so in the meantime I'm working on a few let's say fillers while I crack on with a difficult project. Onto the railway and into service we can see it just in being dragged out of the carriage sidings along with another project that I did some time ago. Link in the corner. Out of the carriage sidings and onto the main line it's now accompanied by vehicles from the Great Western, Eastern and Southern regions.
And that about wraps this one up. It's been nice talking to you again. Thanks for watching. See you next time.